My name is John Rayfield with Rayfield Communications. This is part two of a series of videos intended to demonstrate how to configure a Seabridge controller. Specifically, we'll be looking at the basic remote model. Most of the configuration is done through a web browser interface to the Seabridge controller. So the first step, of course, is to have the Seabridge controller on the same network on which the computer is connected that will be used to, co to configure the controller. The next step is to open a browser window to the controller. We'll do that by typing in the IP address of the controller. Now notice I'm entering HTTP colon forward slash forward slash before I enter the address. That is extremely important. Without the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, you will not be able to connect to the controller. I then enter my IP address, which in this case is 192.168.0.213. I then enter a colon and the number is 42420. That is the port number to which I will connect on the controller. That has to be entered as well. The window that will come up now has a field where the username can be entered as well as a password. The default username is admin and I'll enter the default password and I will then click on the login button. We are now at the main login screen of the Seabridge controller. Now we're only going to set up the very basic items necessary to have the system work. There's a lot of functionality and a lot of settings that we don't need to get into right now. So the first step we're going to do is click on the configuration or config button over here on the left side and this brings up our main configuration window. Now we could go into system here, the system button, and here's where we could set the site name or the controller name or gateway name as it's referred to down here in the lower left area of the screen. I'm going to leave this set to Seabridge, uh, the default. By clicking here I can either change or add usernames and passwords. I can select a guest, a user, or an admin. And in this case, under admin, I have the main admin account and the default password. It's here where I could change the password from the default to something else that I would want. I would simply type in the new address and click on the modify entry button and that would change it. At this point I'll leave it to the default. Now I'm going to go ahead and click the config button back here again on the left side of the screen. Come back to my main config screen. Now I'm going to configure the connections between the Seabridge controller and IP Site Connect systems. Now what I've got here are what we call managers and I have up to five managers with two slots per manager. What that means is I can connect the Seabridge controller with up to five IP Site Connect systems. Each one of these managers can connect to a repeater and then I have one or two slots that I can connect to. Now notice here on the right we have link ID numbers. So each slot on a repeater will be identified by a link ID number up to 10. Two slots, five repeaters, five master repeaters, or 10 link IDs. If I click on the first item here, which I've already named Springfield Master 1, this would be the first manager, and I can put in whatever name I want here, a descriptive name of this channel or this connection to an IP Site Connect system. I have a UDP port for the manager on this box, which usually can be left at the default. I can enter the UDP port for the master repeater to which I'm going to be connecting. I can enter the IP address of the master repeater to which I'm going to be connecting. 
And I already have this set up here with a UDP port of 50,002 and the IP address of the master repeater. I then have a unique ID for this IP Site Connect peer. The IP Site Connect manager, in effect, acts as a repeater without the RF, without the transmitter or the receiver. But it acts like a repeater. In this case, it's going to act like a peer repeater off of this master that I have configured here. You'll notice too here that I could check this box that says operate as master. That would actually cause the manager in the C-bridge here to act as a master repeater instead of a peer repeater. Also if you're using authentication in your system between the repeaters I can enter the authentication key in this field here so that the C-bridge manager will connect to the repeaters properly. In this case I've named this manager Springfield Master 1 and I have the proper information for port uh, number for the master and IP address of the master entered. I'm going to go ahead and click Accept Changes. I can click Go Back and then down here at the bottom I can click Go Back and I can go back another step. Now you notice here I've got a green button or, or LED so to speak. That indicates that that manager has connected to that master IP site connect repeater. Now here I have the first slot the first link ID is 1 and you'll notice here that it's set to automatically start on system startup so when the C bridge boots up it will automatically start that connection. It is set to support both voice and data. Now since that's already set I'm going to go back and I'm going to click on the one that says slot 2 You'll notice here I've named it slot 2 and link ID is 2. It's also set to start automatically and to support voice and data. I have a second I now also have a second manager that is set to Springfield Master 2 and it's connecting to a different repeater with a different unique ID for this IP site connect peer ID and I have a different name for it. And again it's operating as a peer, not a master. And if I look at the slots for this second one, you notice here I have a link ID 3 and it's set to start automatically with voice and data. And then my slot 2 on the second manager is link ID 4. These link IDs are important as that is how how the various slots and repeaters are referenced within the C-Bridge when we get into setting up uh, links between the repeaters. And of course I have these others further down here which are not connected. And of course they show red, indicating that these managers and these slots are not connected to any repeaters. So that's all there is to setting up the Seabridge controller to connect to IP Site Connect systems. It's actually quite simple. Next, let's go back to the config screen and we're going to set up the audio connections or the bridges between these systems. Now I'm going to go back to the config screen where we're going to set up the audio connections. These will be the connections between the repeaters, the bridges between the repeaters. To begin, I'm going to set up a remote device type of IPSC group voice. Since that's what I want to set up at this point is to be able to talk from one system to another system. Now remember we've got two systems set up. The C-Bridge controller is connecting through manager 1 to one IP site connect master repeater and it's connecting through manager 2 to a second repeater. Both slots 1 and 2 are connected. Now what I'm going to do here is create a bridge group. A bridge group is a group of connections. So let's start by calling it IPSC Voice 1. Okay, That's going to be my bridge group. IPSC Voice 1. Now my site name in this case is going to be Seabridge. And the reason why is that is the name of this 
gateway or this system, this controller. In larger systems, we would possibly be using multiple gateways with one server. And in a case like that, we might have to use different site names. But in this case, it's simple. We just put in the same name as what we have over here. Now the link ID is going to be, remember, the slot and the repeater. So link ID 1 is slot 1 on the first repeater system that we're connected to through manager 1. Here we have user ID or group ID. Now I'm going to change this to group 1000. Now I'm going to click add entry click go back and I have one entry in the bridge group. Of course one entry doesn't do me a lot of good yet so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second entry. Now we'll use the same bridge group name again the bridge group being a group of connections so we use the same name the site name is going to stay the same as well because again we're on the same controller but this time I'm going to choose link ID 3 and remember, link ID 3 refers to slot 1 on the second IP site connect system to which the Seabridge is connected. That is through the second manager. I'm going to use the same user ID of 1000. And I'm going to click on Add Entry and then go back. Now I have two entries here. I have an entry for bridge group IP SC voice 1 on slot 1 system 1 the manager 1 system group ID 1000 and it's going to be bridged to link ID 3 which corresponds to the second system connected to the second manager slot 1 the same group ID you'll notice this would actually allow me to even mix and match between slots on the repeaters. For example, instead of entering 3, I could have entered 4, which would have been slot 2 on the second repeater system, as well as entering different group IDs. So I could even bridge between group ID 1000 and group ID 5000, for example. So there's a lot of flexibility in doing this. Now that is how the basic setup is done to bridge between two IP site connect systems that are connected to a Seabridge basic remote controller. The next step that we're going to take is to add in a connection for a PC client. Now to do this, it's very simple. We are going to select the remote device type to be either RNIPC or RNPC. The RNPC is the basic client, which is what we're going to use. Now we're going to have to enter the bridge group again, which was IPSC voice 1, because that is the group to, to which we want to bridge our PC client connection into. So we have IPSC voice 1. Now the site name in this case is going to be a name that will enter into our PC client that identifies that specific client. In this case, we'll call it PC-Office. And we want to remember that, what we entered, so you might want to write that down. It's PC-Office. The link ID in this case is a little different than the link ID in the IPSC managers. In this case, the link ID will reference the channel number or the channel configuration in the PC Office client. So in this case, let's leave it for link ID 1. Now the Enable Transmit should be checked. The Mute Group, in this case, can be left blank. If you were going to use it, we would enter a name that would identify a group of PC clients that would cross-mute. So if you have multiple PC clients in the same room, and you obviously do not want feedback between them when someone transmits on one, then you would enter a group name in here and all PC clients that are assigned to this mute group would be muted when one transmits. For now we'll leave it blank. 
we click Add Entry, and then we're going to go back, and we'll see now that we have an extra line here in our bridge group called IPSC Voice One. We have our two IPSC systems still bridged together, but now we also have an IPSC One bridge group entry with PC-Office and Link ID One. So that takes care of the connection into the, the Seabridge controller from one of the PC clients. At this point, the configuration is really finished in the Seabridge controller. In order for two systems to be bridged together and for a connection to be made from a PC client, the next step is to figure the PC client itself.